Hello, my name is Dana Drapo. I'm Chief Brand Officer at Billboard, and today I am joined by Wale Ogunlea. He is Head of Sports and Entertainment at UBS. As a former NFL player who played in the league for 11 years, Wale knows firsthand what it can be like for a young athlete or entertainer who reaches their first big paycheck without financial guidance. Many artists and creators working in music are also unprepared for their first advance or the sale of their catalog. UBS and Billboard partner to help increase awareness about the financial resources available to entertainers. So in this episode, we'll talk about the biggest challenges facing entertainers today and how they can plan ahead to build their legacies. Thank you so much for being with us. Thanks for having me, Dana. Appreciate it. How did, exactly did you go from being an NFL pro bowler <laughs> to the head of sports and entertainment at UBS? You know, um, I'm still not quite sure. Um, <laughs> You know, you got a New York City kid, um, played in the NFL for 11 years, then now, you know, last, you know, five, four or five years now doing this in finance. I just, I, I, I think about the journey, though. I do think about, you know, how this New York City kid, you know, who I didn't think I was going to play in the NFL, I just thought I was going to be a lawyer, um, made it all the way now to running the sports entertainment division at UBS. Um, but I, I will think that, I will say that I think the my passion for giving back um, and some of my own mistakes um, combined with bumping into the right people um, led me to a place where I could use my talents, my experience, and you know now a firm like UBS to help um, give back to our athletes and entertainers, making sure that they have the right resources to help build a lasting legacy. This initiative that we're doing at UBS it, it, is, is pretty special in getting our, our clients to think about what legacy really means. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm happy that I, I've, I've gotten this position. Um, a lot of hard work, but again, you know, universe or God, you know, I don't even know how, how we got here. I think that's a really beautiful way to put it. And to go back in time for a second, mm -hmm. it seems like an amazing thing to be a young athlete and receive this huge lump sum of money. Sounds mm -hmm. great what's the problem, mm -hmm. but the reality must have been a bit overwhelming also. Oh Can you tell me a little bit about Absolutely. that? Absolutely. Daniel, listen, if you tell, you know, tell me like at one moment I can have anything I want, um, it sounds like a great thing. But for a young individual, you know, athlete or entertainer, that could be a problem, right? Um, everyone now looks at you as, the break in, in, in case of emergency person. Um, all of their problems become your problems. Um, even though now you can buy whatever you want, there comes some big time responsibility with that. So for me, it, it, it was tough. You know, I had to learn uh, the hard way that I can't invest in everyone's uh, idea. Um, I had to learn to not um, feel guilty about being maybe the one person in my neighborhood that made it out. Mm -hmm. um, and that, you know, weighs on people. You know, people love to see um, the car accidents and the big headlines of when people lose everything they had. Mm -hmm. and, and for me, I think it's, it, it stems from a lack of education and not knowing exactly really what finances really meant. And I think if you couple that lack of education and millions and millions of dollars, that's a recipe for disaster. So there's a lot of pressure on these young men and women when they do get their contracts um, from people around them in their ecosystems to solve all their problems. And that's a lot of pressure for people. And uh, that was tough for me too. And I, you know, I give credit to my parents. They did a good job of kind of shielding me a little bit from, um, from my family and friends. Um, and, 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 and in their own right, they were really patient with me too. They didn't ask for the car and a house right away, even though everybody's you know, dream is to buy their mom a house, right? And uh, my mom and dad were really patient with me and it, it, it worked out, but that's a lot of pressure to have on somebody you know, uh, at a young age that you now have all the money in the world and everyone's problems become your problem. Mm. Mm -hmm. That does sound really intense and like it might be helpful to have somebody guide you through that. So Absolutely. 
for you, you're not the average banker, you're not the average financial executive. Mm -hmm. Why are you personally so passionate about changing the way that these institutions work with athletes and entertainers? Yeah, great question. I think, you know, ultimately, when we were, when I was playing, I, I struggled with the amount of money I made. I did, I struggled with understanding how that I'll make more money than my parents who were social workers and teachers who gave back to the kids in the community. Um, and not until we had you know, a really good season and we were on our way to the Super Bowl that I looked into the stadium and I realized like, wow, there's moms and daughters and fathers and sons and black, white, Asian, Spanish, all in one stadium, not caring about their, the worldly issues that were going on and the memories we were creating. And in that moment, whether we were being booed or being cheered, I realized like entertainers have a special place in our hearts and in society. And I think it's our obligation as a firm, as a, as a banking firm and a financial firm, wealth management firm to give back to our clients, um, give back to all of the individuals that have given so much to society and so much to the memories that we talk about during Thanksgiving or Christmas time and the music that we play in the gym when we're hanging out. Those things, I think, for us as an industry, I believe it's our obligation to give back. So um, it's, it's really special for me to, to be working at a firm that understands my vision for this. And um, we're helping to build legacy, you know, one client at a time. That's so beautiful and so different. Mm -hmm. I think from the perspective of so many people who are in positions like you. Let's go back in time one more time, mm -hmm. and I'm curious to hear about this phase of your life before you had the education that you have now. What were some of the mistakes that you made when you first came into money for the first time in your life? Um, well, some of them I'm not sure I can talk about on camera. <laughs> Okay. Um, but I, I will talk about how I let my pride get in the way. I think my ego um, caused me to do things that I probably shouldn't have done. Um, I had a good foundation when it comes to my finances. One, I didn't understand things, so I kind of just stayed away from spending big. But I'll give you this one example. I had went down to a, a Bentley dealership and um, at the time, the house that I was living in cost less than a Bentley. And I don't know what it was, but the way the, the, the salesperson at the Bentley dealership was talking to me, I was like, you know what, I'm just gonna buy it cash right now. And um, I did, I walked out of there with a Bentley. <laughs> and I'm driving my Bentley into my, into my house that is less than my Bentley, costs less than my Bentley. So again, I, I was, had a good path and uh, I thought I was doing the things the right way but I let my ego get in, in, the, in the play and I think that's what happens to a lot of young entertainers you know they have a vision and a plan but they see that friend that's taking that private jet they see the Lamborghini out outside in the parking lot of the stadium and they're like you know what I can do that too instead of sticking to the plan so I think for me my ego um, and my pride got in the way. Well, what's the half-life on the Bentley? It had to feel good before it felt bad. <laughs> oh right? man, it felt great. Because <laughs> listen, I'm down here in Miami. Um, you know, I look at it now, I look back at it now and I, and I laugh about it, but I'm down here in Miami. I had a baby blue Bentley. I mean, two-door man. Don't bury the lead. You have I to mean, say baby blue. Baby Let blue. Let them know. Oh man, it was pretty. <laughs> And, uh, but again, I was pulling into a, into a garage that had, the, the house had less value than the car. So, crazy, crazy. <laughs> okay, so what are some of the things that you wanna see the banking industry do to better accommodate entertainers and athletes? I think ultimately it's, it's, it's the same way we, we, we value relationships. I think the financial institution, when it comes to entertainers, it's too transactional. It's too like, how much money do you have? How much money are you gonna make? How can we make money off of you? There's not a real relationship there. And I tell, you know, and our advisors understand this, um, if 
there's not milestones that you're being invited to, whether it's a wedding or uh, your, their kid's you know, first birthday. If you're not included in those things, you probably have a transactional type relationship. And I think the financial institution needs to do a better job of getting away from that. And in a place where referrals are super uh, important, um, that, that's the, the best way to, to, to earn trust. Mm -hmm. But more importantly, um, when you have relationships that you're vested in understanding their community, um, where they're from, and why they do the things that they do, it makes managing their money much easier. I mean, it's giving you some trust. Absolutely. Absolutely. What are some of the really big issues or challenges that are facing individuals in the music industry now? Well, I think the biggest thing, one, you know, cost of living, I mean, even today, especially with inflation and stuff, it's, it's, much, it's much higher than it was when I was, you know, shopping for uh, that Bentley. So um, I think what we have to do ultimately is some things don't change uh, in the sense that planning, um, people coming to you for ideas. And I think the biggest, biggest change that I think individuals uh, in today's age have to understand is everything you do is in front of a camera. Mm -hmm. Social media has changed the way we view our entertainers. We see everything they do. We see where, they're sh where they shop, where they eat, how they spend their free time. And I think that adds to the pressure of wanting to keep, to keep up with the Joneses. I would tell uh, you know, our younger you know, entertainers and athletes, you know, try to your best to stay away from consuming that type of energy as you uh, spend your day. Because um, it's, it's only going to add um, to your stress level of trying to see how people think about you, how they view you. Um, and it's an oxymoron because we want our clients to have big brands. We want them to be appealing to, um, to their fans. But at the same time, in the financial world, we want them to keep their blinders on and, and stay the course. So I know it's like we're talking out of both sides of, of our mouths, but the truth of the matter is it's, it's extremely hard for these younger athletes and entertainers to, 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 to live a life now, um, especially with social media and they're under the, the, the bright lights of scrutiny. But um, I do think that if you do surround yourselves with the right in individuals, people who care, like we said earlier, um, there is uh, a great opportunity for you to, to, to have a real legacy that lasts long after you're here. What advice would you give someone now who has spent their whole life, many hours, so much effort, achieving what it takes to become a musician who's in the position to receive a lot of money or get a payout or get an advance. It's not like there's that much time to go and get an MBA right. or to seek out these individuals who are gonna be you know, trusted advisors for you. So how can somebody in that position avoid some of the mistakes that you made early on? Yeah, I think there's so many avenues to get information. Ultimately, if you can, I say, educate yourself. You know, the World Wide Web can be, you know, a dangerous place, but it can be a place where you can get some valuable education. And I think for me, what put me on the right path was taking that extra step to understand what my financial advisors were telling me. And that's what the MBA did for me. And you may not have the time to do that, but you, I promise you, you do have the time to take an hour a week just to understand the basics of finances. When your financial advisor is talking to you, if there's something or a word you don't understand, ask them to explain it. It's pretty simple. That's how you slowly get to understand your finances. And then as you um, understand who you are as in stature and you grow as an, an entertainer, you won't surround yourself with other people, especially advisors that don't meet your stature, mm -hmm. that don't, um, um, have reputational risk like you do. And I think that's a lot of, a big mistake that I think all of our entertainers uh, tend to do is we don't surround ourselves with people that from a reputational side um, meet the stature we have. Um, and that's what gets us in a lot of trouble because there's a lot of people who have nothing to lose and we should not have them in our orbit. But too many times, you know, entertainers do. You spoke a little bit about the way that being the person who makes money mm -hmm. when others around you maybe haven't been in that position yet can put a lot of pressure on you. Mm -hmm. 
and having a great team is so vital. The reality also for musicians is that having people around you is essential, but let's talk a little bit about the entourage. Mm. What is the appropriate number of people <laughs> for an artist to have in their entourage? Um, zero. Let's get rid of entourages. I mean, in a world of finance and what I've seen, I'm like, get rid of the entourages. But okay, let's be realistic. The people that are really in your circle should be small and tight. Um, trusted advisors, people that um, have your best interests at heart, people that have skin in the game. Um, and and here's the, the best point, people that are smarter than you. Um, I love to be in a room where I am not the smartest person. And um, a lot of times that's the case. And I think that's why though, I've been super successful. I surround myself with people that um, know way more than I do. And what I add to the, to, the, to the pot is my talent, my passion, my integrity, and I think that's a recipe for success. Just for our viewers at home, are there any open positions in your entourage now? Are you accepting applications? <laughs> <laughs> entourage is closed. Okay. How does Drake say it? No new friends, no new friends. <laughs> No new friends. No new friends. Okay. Well, we'll keep you posted if that changes. <laughs> <laughs> so what are some of the, the really important steps that entertainers should take to start planning for their legacy? Great question. And um, I would say, number one, I start everything with education, right? Um, find as much information you can on some of the topics that you have. Get questions and get those questions answered. Um, next would be surrounding yourself with subject matter experts, whether it be a financial advisor, a CPA, uh, a manager. Those individuals are going to basically handle a lot of the day-to-day -day things that you have going on in your life, and I would make sure I have trusted advisors in each one of those roles. And then lastly, stay involved. Stay um, included in the decisions make decision making be the person that signs your checks um, read invoices um, don't be that entertainer that pushes everything off to somebody else that is a recipe for disaster but those would be my three things for a young entertainer as they're coming up uh, in their stardom and just for the sake of a little education now mm -hmm. can you give me a primer the difference between CPA, financial advisor, manager? So I'll try to answer that in high level really quickly. A CPA basically is your accountant. Someone who at the end of the day makes sure you pay your state and government taxes, keeps you out of trouble with the IRS, which we know we gotta make sure we stay out of trouble with the IRS. Um, two, your financial advisor handles basically all of your investments, your savings, your budgeting, puts you on a plan to make sure at the end of the day, when it's all said and done, you can live the lifestyle you have for a long period of time. And then your manager, that's the person who gets you your contracts, you know, gets you some gigs, manage your day-to-day -day stuff, um, and actually is, connects all of the dots and keeps things moving smoothly. Um, and, and making sure that you're building your brand and ultimately um, helping you on your way to being this big celebrity that you are. We've said this word, legacy, planning for your legacy. What does legacy mean to you personally? Wow, legacy means to me, which you know, it's great. I, ask, I always <laughs> ask people this question. <laughs> legacy means to me, um, giving back i think i'm in such a privileged position that i can't squander it keeping this information to myself um this is the thing that keeps me moving um i want to not have all the money in the world but i want to at least give the tools to a young wale or um wherever they are in the world, that they can achieve things that money really just can't buy. It's about pouring into people. It's about changing communities. It's about pulling people through the door that you've opened up or have helped open, opened up. 
And for me, that's my lasting legacy. I hope at the end of the day, when it's all said and done, that I've been able to make an impact on people. Um, I've supported people who needed it. Um, but more importantly, people who look like me can say, hey, you know what? This kid from Staten Island, New York, made it all the way to the top of Wall Street. After being at the top of the NFL, I mean, sky's the limit for me. So uh, hopefully at the end of the day, that would be what my legacy should be. Well, here, here, it sounds like you're putting the pieces in place to make sure that's what you be. I mean, I'm strong. Listen, I'm with you right now. So, <laughs> I mean, the fact that I'm sitting here with you um, and, and this interview says that, you know, you know, both of us are doing some good things. So I'm, I'm pretty excited about that. Well, let's keep it going. Keep it moving. Thank you so much for your time today. Thanks for having me.